Hello, good evening. Hello, Kedar, sir. कैसे हैं कैसे हैं हाय बहुत बस कैसे हैं आप बस मजे में हैं आप बताओ बस बढ़िया चल रहा है 
काम काज तो एकदम काम में आपके वहां कैसा है I mean, uh, compared to previous years, it's quite uh, cool, but not like north. Here, pe now nine degrees, ten degrees, till jata hai. Very rarely below that. Hmm. And work, work, how is it? Work, work, work. 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 Work, work, हमारा भी 15 दिसंबर के बाद से थोड़ा डाउनफॉल है आई थिंक ये ये मार्च अभी अप्रैल का रिफ्लेक्शन होगा ये मोस्टली बट नाउ दे हैव प्रेडिक्टेड दैट द डिलीवरी रेट विल इंक्रीज बाय 20% इन कमिंग ईयर सो डोंट नो ऐसा चलो स्टैक कंपनी कोई कैलिब्रेटी आने के बाद बढ़ता है इट सीम्स हेलो हाय कैसे बस चल रहा है <laughs> बस हम वही काम काम की बात कर रहे थे मैं भी खाना खा रहा था काम का ही काम चल रहा था अच्छा ऐसा है तो बढ़िया है फिर तो हमारे यहाँ पे तो काम खाना खाने के लिए टाइम है काम है ही नहीं <laughs> अरे काम सर सर ने ऑलरेडी बोल दिया औरंगाबाद की हालत बहुत गंभीर है डाउन तो सर ने तो उसको मॉडरेट करके वर्ड यूज किया ये यूज मॉडरेट वर्ड हमारी हालत गंभीर है सच में होपफुल पॉजिटिव हाँ नहीं बिल्कुल अभी तो खैर इट इज गुड के बच्चे सारे ठीक हैं मीन घरों में बैठे इसलिए इन्फेक्शन नहीं आ रहे हैं कुछ होने के बाद ओपीडी तो पक्का बढ़ेगी कोविड पहला जाता है तो नया वेरिएंट आ जाता है उसके ऊपर चालू होता है सब <laughs> यहाँ पर गवर्नमेंट और जुडिशरी दोनों भी इतने डरे हुए हैं कि वो कुछ ओपन ही नहीं कर रहे वो काम ही नहीं हो रहा है इसलिए तो जब तक तो ये लोग काम नहीं करेंगे तो बाकी के लोग ऑटोमेटिकली वो बंद ही रहेंगे ना सही बात संदीप आलोल दिस्त है
सगळे न्यू इयर जे याच्यावर दिसत आहेत मूड मध्ये अटेंडन्स कमी किती आलेत आता हा किती जण आले येत आहेत अजून लोकांना ना असं आहे की ऍक्च्युली दे म्हणजे कॉन्फरन्स सुरू झाले मग रजिस्ट्रेशन फ्री पेमेंट करून मग मग येतात लोक बरोबर म्हणजे असं बरोबर आवाज गेला तुझा हम्म बारीक आला एकदम हो हो आता ठीक आहे मी तर काही मला वेळ नाही मिळाल ते जेवतो सकाळी म्हणून ते ठीक आहे पण बाकी आज अचानक पिडियटेशन झाल्याच्या म्हणजे दाखला मिळाला मला अचानक ओपडीतून ओपडीतून साडेतीन तिथेच वाजले आज तुझा आवाज खूप बारीक आहे सुनील काय झालं असं हा आता ठीक आला काय झालं काय माहित अचानकच असेल कुठेतरी टेक्निकल इश्यू याची टेक्निकल इश्यूची खूप भीती वाटते काय होईल सांगतात ना मध्ये बंद पडेल कधी दोन मिनिट थांबून चालू करूया मला वाटतंय ना दोन मिनिट थांबूया हळूहळू जॉईन होतात लोक येत आहेत हा हे टॉपिक पण जरा हे इंटरेस्टिंग आहे ना त्यामुळे त्यांना विचारावं त्यांना सुटेबल टायमिंग काय आहे ना बेटर त्यांना काही सुटेबल नसतो टाईमिंग प्रश्न आहे रात्री दहा नंतर ते बोलतील येस चालेल आम्हाला रात्री दहा नंतर होतायत जॉय लोक हळूहळू एक दोन मिनिट मी जॉय स्टार्ट करूया आपण मी मेसेज टाकतो तू मागे सरकला की आवाज बारीक येतोय तुझा इयर फोन असेल तर बघ म्हणजे हा प्रॉब्लेम सॉल्व होऊन जाईल आहे ते आता लावू का हा कारण तू आवाज मध्येच जातोय मध्येच म्हणजे बारीक होतोय मध्येच ठीक येतोय मोहित सर विल स्टार्ट इन टू मिनिट्स टू मिनिट्स आता ओके का सर हा बेटर ओके राईट कन्सिस्टंट आहे so interesting talk let's see how many people want to learn pda today learn or learn whatever it is <laughs> yes mo it's sir unki puri baja rahe hain dekhte hain kya jo aa raha tha wo bhi bhul gaye confuse kar diya pura the hemodynamic is like that only like it's like you read the uh, different different articles you'll get different different perspectives mm. and uh, and again subjective uh, like protocols some institutional protocols they also like usme bahut interfere ho jata hai usme because controversies are there so it is no uniform practices bada mushkil hai anyway dekhte hain isliye to experts ko bula rahe hain isliye to experts ko bula rahe hain to experts bhi confuse hote hain दो एक्सपर्ट आपस में अलग अलग करेंगे वही मैं एक केस बात करने वाला था इसमें लाइक यू नो हमारे पास एक टर्म पे भी था 4.2 पॉइंट टू के जी का उसमें तीन या चार कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट इन्वॉल्व थे बच्चा मर गया तो ठीक है चार आ गए तो मुश्किल है सिर्फ इसी के लिए कि पीडीए लाइगेट करना है कि नहीं करना है उसी में सब चलता रहा माय गॉड 
नहीं लेकिन वो अभी आज वो भी है ना वो अपना वेंटिलेशन वर्कशॉप भी चल रहा है ना चार बजे वो भी है करेक्ट हाँ ये हमारे सारे फेलोज ऐसे में लगे हुए हैं एक्चुअली करेक्ट 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 सर आपका आपका शेयर कर दो स्क्रीन नो प्रॉब्लम ओके ओके आपको एनेबल कर दिया है स्क्रीन शेयरिंग के लिए आज वेंटिलेशन वर्कशॉप ओके ओके दिख रहा है ना आपको स्क्रीन हाँ सर यस सर या क्वाइट विजिबल चलो एकदम सही है स्क्रीन भी बहुत अच्छी तरह दिख रहा है सर भी बहुत स्मार्ट दिख रहा है वैसे ऐसे ही चल रहा है वो स्माइलिंग फेस है वो ट्वेंटी फोर बाय सेवन ओके तो अन्य वे विल स्टार्ट सर सर नाउ आई थिंक बेटर टू स्टार्ट हेलो ओके We'll, we'll start, sir, I think. Yeah. Okay, sure. Moit, sir? Sure. Right, okay. So, okay, okay, fine. anyway, the, uh, all the interesting or those who are interested, I think they have joined. Good thing, actually. Rather than having too many people, those who are really interested, they have joined most, mostly. Uh, that's a good thing. Like uh, close, close sort of uh, indoor meet sort of thing. 25 people. So they will join later, some people. Now, uh, to start with, I will welcome all the uh, participants. On behalf of State NF Maharashtra, uh, Dr. Kadam sir is busy with workshop today. Our president. Uh, but uh, anyway, the year is ending, 2020, and uh, I think everybody must uh, enjoy 2020 this year. <laughs> hopefully, take <laughs> the now. Hopefully, the 2021 will be good. Some some positive thing. And uh, by now uh, this weekend, we have very interesting talk by none other than Mohit sir. And actually, there are a few people who actually don't know introduction, but I will request Kedar sir later on to introduce sir. So he will talk his favorite area, neonatal hemodynamics, PDA that too. And that is again, let's see, like uh, I request everybody to enjoy, listen and participate, be active participant, ask a lot of questions, uh, practical questions. And this is a topic where definitely like there will be a lot of gray zones and uh, uh like involving science is there a lot of uh, controversies and uh, hope uh, everybody will go with the clear cut message practical messages at the end and again we'll have uh, one more like next week but uh, to be to like uh, i'll ask kedar sir now that we don't have president here with sandeep kedar sir to just uh, take over and uh, introduce mohit sir and uh, 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 go ahead with the uh, session and request all the participants please do interact this should be a more interactive session so uh, use it maximum like this is sort of academic phase like Mohit sir speaking on PDM okay Kedar sir oh, thank you Salim uh, it is my privilege to introduce my friend Dr. Mohit Sahani from Surat uh, he is a renowned neonatologist as all of you uh, know him very well he is a director and uh, in intensivist, neonatal intensivist in, at Nirmal Hospital, Surat. So <clears throat> he is also editor-in-chief uh, for the Journal of Neonatology. And he was an assistant professor in neonatal cardiology at hospital for sick children, Toronto, Canada, University of Toronto. He is the president and NF of Gujarat State Branch 2020 and 2021 and a governing body member of the NNF for Western Zone. He has done his fellowship in neonatology and uh, neonatal cardiology at uh, Sydney and Brisbane, as well as uh, he has done his fellowship a diploma in follow-up uh, high-risk neonat by Bailey 3 at Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia, and neonatal cardiology <coughs> and echocardiography at Australia. So he's also done his fellowship in neonatal transport and neonatal cardiology and eco at Hospital for Sick Children, Toronto, Canada, and a diploma in research project management from the University of Toronto. Uh, as all of us know, he's uh, invited as a faculty in various national and international conferences. And he has uh, 20 publications to his credit in the peer review journal. 
and he is also <coughs> he has been the chief editor of two books the point of care neonatal ultrasound neonatal cardiology and neonatal uh, eco med easy so today friends uh, when uh, the controversial year is ending we are ending the uh, <coughs> year by uh, discussing another controversial topic the management of pda so when how to diagnose how to treat when to treat what are the dosages when not to treat how to treat in different uh, settings tertiary care secondary care where the eco facility is available eco is not available when to go for surgery so there are a lot of controversies and lot of queries in the minds of all the uh, neonatologist and uh, since almost 18 years we are discussing in the pda management and its controversy and we are still yet to come to some conclusion so uh, we are privileged to have uh, dr mohit who uh, will be simplifying this topic i'm sure and giving us some guidelines uh, according to the settings where we are working so thank you very much mohit yeah you can uh, proceed you. thank you good evening everyone uh, thank you dr kedar dr sunil and maharashtra nnnr for giving me the chance to discuss pda with all of you so in the next half an hour or so we will discuss this pda approach and like in short what is this pda and as you can see if you are you know if you have to be very cautious with this pda because you aim for it and sometimes you aim you hit the target and it bounces back so what comes for our savior is this probes like eco so let's see what all uh, uh, we we like dr kedar has uh, already explained you the controversies so let's see if we can solve these controversies or not uh, as all must be knowing what is the pda this is the first and foremost thing we should know like if the fellows are there or some students have joined it is for their benefit like pda is this connection which is being there it arises from around from where this descending aorta starts and it goes and join the pulmonary artery where it bifurcates towards the lpa left pulmonary artery side so this is their intra uterine it has to be there and then as the baby is born it closes within some time first closure is functional closure and then the closure is anatomical closure this why of showing showing this slide uh, this is basically just showing you that when the pda closes spontaneously as compared to the weight and as you can see in this slide there are only two weights in most of the term babies babies more than around 2 to 2 and a half kgs 80 to 90% of the pga pda is closes functionally by 3 days of life so that's why it's not a very big problem in uh, term babies or bigger babies it's a big problem in premature babies so if we compare that the pda you know if the birth weight is more than 1 kg there is spontaneous closure you know by around 50 days but initially earlier it is mostly open but the babies which are very small elbw babies almost 80 to 90% the pda remains open so that's why it's a bigger problem in the elbws and vlbws as compared to the term and the uh, bigger weight babies so that is one thing we should keep in mind so that's why we always target smaller babies when we talk about pda so what are the factors one is this pulmonary vascular resistance because as everybody must be knowing if we go to the fetal circulation your pulmonary vascular resistance is very high so after birth you know when this uh, because of transition when this pulmonary vascular uh, vascular resistance decreases it is one of the factor that goes in favor of closure of pda then your oxygen contents after birth it increases in blood that also favors pda closure and then there is a release of prostaglandin so we must keep in mind the cross section of this pulmonary vessels in between where this intima in middle layer is there it is been supplied by vaso vasorum and why it is important because i will show you what hap i will show you in the next slide why it is important so first first we know uh, we uh, saw the factors which closes the pda but there are few things after the birth 
which keeps your PD open. One is hypoxia. Okay, if because of any reason, because of RDS in premature or any lung pathologies, if this hypoxia gets created, it keeps your PD open. If this transition of pulmonary vascular resistance, which decreases after birth, is being disturbed, it delay your PD closure. And if your baby is get sepsis, so your inflammatory markers mediators are being produced, which keeps this PD open. And naturally, if if there is some congenital heart disease in which your pulmonary or systemic circulation is duct dependent, then nature keeps your PD open. So that's why. this is something very important you should keep in mind that anything can be congenital heart disease which can be duct okay. dependent so that's why you should be okay. very careful in closing your pd ji main dile ti padelam acha tumhi tikde se ka bar bar yeah everybody please mute yourself so now is you see this slide why i was telling you about the cross section of the vessels so this is a cross section of a vessel of a term baby and this is a cross section of a vessel pulmonary vessel of a preterm baby see the difference the lumen is very big in preterm babies the intima is very small here the intima is very thick so when because of the transition when your vessel viscerum starts getting close your intima gets Uh, fibrosed so that's why your term baby is the pda gets closed very early as compared to your preterm baby and the and the studies they have clearly proven that so these are the few factors which keeps your pda open and those which closes your pda gestation and birth weight is one of the main factor now how these babies they present clinically so whenever we talk about pda everybody you know focus on murmur okay if the murmur is there it may be a pda but i if i tell you out of all the clinical presentations clinical examination murmur is the least important thing because if your pda is so large why the murmur appears because it appears because of turbulence so the turbulence will be higher you know more the turbulence more harsh will be the murmur so when the turbulence is more harsh that means your pda size is smaller because of the resistance it is giving so larger is your pda more laminar will be the blood flow through the pda and least will be the chances of murmur so many times it happens your pda is hemodynamically very significant very large but there is no murmur so clinically you will say see there is no murmur so it means there may not be a pda if i am hearing murmur in in babies it means the pda size will be most likely is small so that's why it is the sign clinical sign of least importance okay so that's why you should be very careful assessing the murmurs in pda other thing is wide pulse pressure that is the difference between your systolic and diastolic blood pressures this is one of the very important sign so that's why that's why you just don't keep an eye on mean blood pressures always see the systolic and diastolic individually separately and see the difference between them if the difference between systolic and diastolic is more than 10 to 15 mm of mercury that means it is a wide pulse pressure and you should be aware of that see the bounding pulses we do right but in especially in elbws and uh, it is very difficult to assess the bounding pulses okay so uh, when i teach to my fellows or the residents i tell them that if you can easily palpate the radial pulse or uh, dorsalis pedis in elbw babies it means it is a bounding pulse because so it's not very easy to palpate the radial or dorsalis pedis in elbws their precordium it's a hyperdynamic circulation and then the babies will be hypotensive hypotensive because the mean blood pressures when we assess is less because of the wide pulse pressure and there is systemic hypoperfusion so your cr crt cft whatever you say if it is prolonged okay you have to keep that in mind that is very important and whenever your babies are on some respiratory support like suppose your baby is on cpap on third day of life the premature baby if fr2 requirement started increasing okay your pressure requirement if baby is on invasive breath, uh, ventilation your pressure requirement starts increasing if the baby is on high flow or on room air started having respiratory distress or premature baby started having more frequent apnea that also goes in favor of pd and it is they are very they are much better signs and symptoms or signs i would say 
in uh, in preterm babies as compared to the mama you should be attending more to these these are very important because of the pulmonary over circulation so <clears throat> you know whenever we talk about pda we always just concentrate on one thing okay echo 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 and we ignore the other signs and symptoms it has to be in collaboration otherwise sometimes if we just keep on attending the pda we sometimes ignore respiratory system digestive system or head so that should not happen it it has to be in total in toto so don't save one egg try to save all the eggs okay now the question is who wants to treat the pda one if you don't have the echo if you have the echo okay the answer will be it is always a recommendations to treat the pda only after getting an echo done only because on on clinical assessment and clinical history it is very obvious this is pda but one in 1000 i am worried about duct dependent lesions if that happens if you close the pda the baby will die and i have seen two babies in my this thing um experience dying because of this and that is not in india one is in sydney one is in toronto so even in advanced countries this is happening so you just you cannot decide to close the pda until unless the echo is being done because you have to rule out duct dependent lesions it is very important that is first and foremost message so just discuss a case so this is a baby 28 week birth weight of around 1 kg baby boy born to 32 years old gravida to mother the no antenatal issues steroid last dose one day adequate steroid cover no prm antenatal ultrasound everything is being normal born by vaginal delivery abga scores were fine was having increased work of breathing so was intubated and was given surfactant within 20 minutes of birth was on uh, invasive ventilation not much 14 by 5 of pressures initial fi to requirement was 35% then it decreased to 21% within 30 minutes within 2 days was extubated on cpap on caffeine but on day 4 was on high flow nasal cannula on fi to 30% and and was on feeds of 2 cc every Two hourly, but on day four was started having some spirits. Was baby was stable? Just were, there was a murmur three to four grade pulses were palpable in all the four limbs equal not bounding. Heart rate is good, respiratory rate bit tachypneic around sixty two. This is the X ray. You can see good volume lungs. This is the blood pressure forty five systolic, diastolic thirty two, mean of thirty eight. The blood pressures mean blood pressures were normal. Okay, abdomen soft. and in x-ray there was sir, some streaky appearance but as we discussed the lungs were good volume so what can be the uh, issue in this baby on day 3 okay so that is very typical day 3 your vascular resistance is decreasing pulmonary vascular resistance is decreasing okay your so was on invasive ventilation off invasive ventilation and then on uh, this thing high flow nasal cannula okay so most likely because this is around 28 weeker 27 28 weeker 1 kg baby on day 3 very typical time where the pda becomes hemodynamically significant so most likely it may be a pda but first x ray was been done we have to rule out some lung pathology okay so now the pda is there how many way of us will start the treatment obviously we have talked it is not the preferred way if if we are suspecting clinically the pda it has to be cross checked and seen and confirmed by the echo okay so yes we do need information echo was done in this the P heart was structurally normal this is the first thing the next thing was pda size is 1.8 mm with left to right shunting okay so if i talk about this as dr kedar was telling now all other investigation no sepsis is being ruled out pneumothorax ruled out pneumonia lung collapse all those things are ruled out head ultrasound done was normal no ivh so now we know echo has been done clinically the baby is fitting into pda and then i uh, i think there should not be any issues just close the duct but as dr kedar told there is a confusion for everything even after knowing the size of this pda okay and this pda shunting left to right even though heart is structurally normal should i treat this pda again i am confused and this is the slide which tells that in 
there was only one published paper regarding the pda in the premature babies it from 1973 till 2016 it has gone to more than 200 papers okay but you see in 1973 we did not know anything so whoever whatever who you do it was fine then by 2000 okay they were around like in 2000 there was around 40 50 publications we thought we knew everything then in next 17 years it doubled and then you see from i know 100% it went to again confusion so that's why it's confused so that's why dr kedar told from the last 17 18 years we have been discussing this and we are still confused and he is very true in that even this studies and everything they prove that why this is happening you know one as the time is been passing we are we, our evidence for everything is increasing we rely more on rcts and meta analysis but what is happening the art of medicine the clinical medicine art is decreasing our physiological knowledge which we have already read in our initial years of medicine is decreasing and hence what is that has led to it has led to confusion so that's why we are confused not only because only on pda if i ask you how you feed a newborn preterm baby 100 neonatologists will give 100 answers so we are confused even in giving the feeding also so pda is something which is much ahead of that so i uh, we just see how this pda ductal care trend has happened over the years in 1998 you know in early 90s or uh, 2000 it was an era of prophylactic nicds we used to give indomethacin prophylactically okay then we came to know this drug causes side effect and there is no much use of it so what we in few years 2 to 5 years of that big publication of prophylactic nicds we stopped doing it. and then we found this this is causing issue uh, indomethacin look for some alternative agents we came up with the iv ibuprofen and then now it came we came with oral now oral oral may be better or equivalent then we thought okay now this is not there like in india iv ibuprofen is not there we started using iv paracetamol so then this paracetamol thing is going on but in early 2000s the functional echo came up it spotted us so then we all decided okay now we will treat pda on the basis of what information we will get from functional echo but there is always one group which does not believe in treating pda so that is an era of permissive ductus and it started in 2000 and they have been there since last 20 years they are stuck on it yes pda should not be treated we will talk about that whether we should let the pda be there or we should treat it if we are going to treat it how to do it okay so this dilemma is this is there uh, okay so uh, first dilemma is to treat it or not to treat okay that dilemma we will try to solve that if we are treating what we should do one conservative management second medical management and if we have decided to do medical management then the question come which drug indomethacin ibuprofen paracetamol then if the baby reaches to such a condition that there should be some surgical intervention so previously it was very you know at least in this heading it was very clear and easy okay if your baby is having pda like it but now last 2 to 3 years again this device closure has come the uh, i don't know about the other places the youngest and the lowest weight baby which got the device closure in surat in our center is uh 826 or 846 gram baby so now this thing so you know a uh, lot of confusion as as i told you as the science is progressing uh, i think so somebody should uh, uh, dr sunil dr sunil bail please mute yourself dr sunil okay so let's uh, let's all these confusions what best we can do to solve this confusion okay so the first thing is if i want to solve any confusion in especially in this what are the things i should be knowing to solve this confusion so the best way is you know your problem physiologically well so that's why i told you i wanted to show you what is the physiology of closure of pda 
so you should know the physiology of pda then the evidence also comes i don't i don't tell you that evidence only create confusion it it gives you some it gives you the answer so that's why you should know the physiology combine it with your evidence and then never ever leave your clinical assessment because investigations evidence is one thing okay but your clinical assessment always take uh, it always uh, rank higher than everything else so these three things if you combine and then try to approach this problem your confusion most of the time will be solved so let's talk about this pda physiology okay anatomy we discussed so when your baby is born at from the delivery room this transition is going on and this is this is the days of life of the baby so initially as soon as the baby is delivered and the cot is cut there is high pulmonary pressures but because of this transition phase by day 2 the pulmonary pressures physiologically and normally decreases that's why because of the decrease in this pulmonary pressures your pda will be open especially in the preterm babies we have already seen in that slide okay your left to right shunting from pda will increase and it will reach it apex by day second or third of life so that's how and it will persist if the pda remains open okay that's why because of this you will have your pulmonary over circulation systemic hypotension okay systemic hypoperfusion that's why you will have more chances by day end many places you must have seen this premature babies less than 1 kg or 800 grams they have the pulmonary hemorrhage issues by day 2 or 3 and they become hypotensive if it passes 4 or 5 days then there are chances of ivh and later on by third or fourth week you start developing neck and bpd so they are all the after effects of your pda so this is what is the physiology and issues that are being created because of the pda physiology this cartoon explains the same so this is your left ventricle this is your left ventricle outlet aorta one its one connection is to the lungs through the pda and one connection is to the body through aorta svr is systemic vascular resistance pvr is pulmonary vascular resistance and as we know after this cord is being cut your svr is higher most of the time than your pvr now you see what happens what happens to the preterm babies you have what you have done you have given surfactant you ventilated this baby and hence your carbon dioxide is washed out you have given oxygen or sometimes nitric oxide so your babies are alkalotic and hypocapnic what all these factors they will do they will decrease your pulmonary vascular resistance further and then if you tend to start the pressers give oxygen and the baby, preterm babies become hypothermic what happens your svr increases what it does it increases the shunting of the blood going out from the left ventricle towards the pulmonary side and hence because of this your pda becomes hemodynamically significant therefore causes pulmonary over circulation and systemic hypoperfusion and that's how your pda presents and therefore because of this pulmonary over circulation it causes your cld's and lung issues and that's why when clinically your baby started getting hemodynamic significant pda your respiratory support needs go high okay and because of this systemic hypoperfusion this baby starts getting iv ivh pvl and neck and babies they become hypotensive that's how your pda presents clinically and this is how we even assess the pda by echo also we take the signs in echo which tells us how bad is the pulmonary over circulation and how bad is the systemic hypoperfusion so again i come on that case where your pda was 1.8 mm okay so in this i just gave you the information regarding the size of the pda around 10 15 15 years back when there were a lot of publications by nick evans and martin kluka uh, regarding the size of the pda so stringently the neonatologist doing functional echo at that time they were following the size of the pda and treating the pda but during this 15 years even in neonatal hemodynamics a lot of research on functional echo has gone so then we got confused that just by knowing the size of the pda should we treat the baby or not okay i just give you the example this is small pda 
this is a large pda and okay you can see the difference between the body sizes okay but size does not matter because the doing some particular functions it is different you see the smaller body takes out this patch so nicely and you see the what happens to this large one so that's why size is not always the right indicator to decide the treatment okay so that's why whenever we have a pda if we if we are doing echo also and clinically we should ask these question to ourselves number one pda is there yes if it is there whether now it is not the size whether it is hemodynamically significant yes if yes do i need to treat this pda yes then if yes with what and if not or if i am treating the pda how closely i need to monitor this pda so this is very much similar to the ventilation whether this baby need ventilation yes how i should ventilate cpap simv what invasive ventilation invasive ventilation okay so whichever mode you want to use use that but then whichever mode you use whichever treatment you use you should monitor that baby similar you have to monitor this pda so that's why this monitoring of pda is a new terminology which has also come up i we will discuss regarding that so when i am doing an echo okay so how i should see that this is hs pda hemodynamically significant pda because we have discussed size is not everything so number one again we have to see in echo whether the duct is patent yes then we do the dopplers okay the see the flow pattern of blood flow through the pda okay so for hs pda hemodynamic significant pda it has to be left to right okay then we look for that how is this organ perfusion is systemic hyperperfusion as we discussed and then we look for this uh, different signs and different uh, parameters to see that how bad is the pulmonary over circulation so then we can label this duct as a hs pda that is very important so this is how we do the this uh, is ductal view it is suprasternal view pointer at 12 o'clock this is how it will look like okay if you have a pda this is how the pda will look like two blues and this red is pure left to right shunting in this this is how this pda so now this pda is there so where we should look for the measure the size of the pda this is commonly known as tripod sign this is your pulmonary artery this is your descending aorta this is your rpa right pulmonary artery this is your lpa left pulmonary artery and this is your duct so wherever this duct it enters your pulmonary artery so that is the narrowest part so that is the point we should measure the pda so this is the point we should measure our ductal size so there you will get the size of the pda okay and then now we have started labeling at mild moderate severe or small medium or large this is how we start labeling the size so size of that pda if it is less than 1.5 mm it is small medium or moderate it is 1.5 to 3 and if it is more than 3 mm it is large pda this is just one of the component to label your duct as a hemodynamically significant pda hs pda the next thing is the doppler doppler is when we do put the pulse wave doppler in the red flow where this red flow of the pda is and then we measure so normally we get these kind of patterns okay if you get this pattern this is wave you know okay this is like a pulse style pattern so if do you have a pulse style pattern like this okay it goes up and down to the baseline and your peak velocity is less than 2 meters per second then that shows it is a large pda okay your peak velocity less than 1.5 mm okay meters per second 1.5 meters per second and that shows it is a large pda the flow is laminar so that tells you that it's a severe it's a bigger pda if you have a pattern like this this is like closing you know not closing but it is transition you see the peak velocity is around 2 meters per second so it has gone up and it is not coming very close to the baseline also it's a intermediate pattern okay your peak velocity is around 2 meters per second and it is not coming to the base so this is intermediate and this is what we call as the closing pattern your peak velocity is more than 2 meters per second and you see the variation the pulse stability is not very much it is almost similar like you know, it's all white 
it is not going very down so this is what we call as the closing pattern it means the pda is getting smaller this is one or another component okay so in for hspda it has to be purely left to right shunting we do get uh, shunting you know bi directional pure right to left shunting but that is more in significance of pulmonary hypertension so it has got a different significance so if i am talking about pda i will not be touching on that okay we are just considering purely in terms of pda okay and then we are just considering for hspda it has to be pure left to right shunting clear so and the other signs what we see other parameters what we see in echo for pulmonary over circulation is lalv if it is dilated it is volume dilatation we look for mr ea ratios isovolumetric relaxation time la ratios and left ventricle output normal value is if it is more than 310 ml per kg per minute it is high so these are the thing even like i tell people if you are not doing echo by yourself if somebody else is coming okay if a cardiologist is coming just ask that person to give you this measurements so that you can take your decisions very nicely and easily okay so what are the things which tells you that there is oh, pulmonary over circulation is going on for mild modern sphere one is size we have seen 1.5 1.5 to 3 and more than 3 lalv is dilated yes mildly dilated or it is very large and there is sphere mr if your la ratios is 1.5 1.5 to 2 more than 2.1 ea values ea ratio values are this ivrt this is milliseconds values and this is lbo so if you get this table and if somebody gives you the numbers for these parameters then you can decide whether it is mild mild duct smaller duct moderate duct or very severe and big duct so these are the parameters which give you the assessment for pulmonary over circulation so then what are the parameters which give you the uh, indication for your systemic hypoperfusion one thing is you assess the flow in guts so how we do it we do the dopplers of celiac and sma and we also similarly do the dopplers on anterior cerebral artery by head ultrasound so this is the our sagittal view and this is where we do the aca anterior cerebral artery dopplers so these are the normal dopplers okay you have systolic and positive diastolic flow see in all systemic vessels in systole and diastole there will be a positive flow otherwise you know if you start having negative or no flow in diastole then in every one in every one second if your heart beat is around 40 40 times you will go into syncope okay so that's why it is a normal pattern <clears throat> if your duct ductal steel is moderate what you will start having is you will have systolic flow but there will not any diastolic flow in this systemic vessel and in the sphere like if the duct is very sphere very big and there is a ductal steel what we call so this is ductal steel if you do acr select dopplers in systole there is positive flow but in diastole you see there is an active flow it goes down so this is the severest form of systemic hypoperfusion okay that's how when we combine in this table you can see again mild moderate and severe pda size i have shown you okay ductal velocities we have talked about la lv dilatations we have talked about and this is the systemic like normal in systole and diastole both positive in moderate it is absent diastolic flow in severe it is reverse diastolic flow so this when we combine it gives you the idea of hspda because it combines your size it combines your pulmonary over circulation and it combines your systemic hypoperfusion and it gives you a very clear cut idea that how bad is the duct depending on the echo on function like echo what we do okay so you should keep this in thing in mind now just see this scenario is 27 weeker 980 g baby girl <clears throat> born to 23 years old gravida to mother no antenatal steroids given steroids last dose one day prior everything was fine okay uh, was having uh, this thing ventilation settings pretty high you see it has gone up from 30% 60% was on cpap so was intubated on caffeine abdominal distension abdomen x ray was done showed the feature of nec wide pulse pressure you can see in this 40 and 22 bonding pulses 
that clinically it is showing very clearly that there is pulmonary overcirculation systemic hypoperfusion okay that are the clinical features which which are showing that this is hspda hemodynamic significant pda okay so and then when we did an echo in this baby okay you see the size everything so what information we got big duct 2.7 left heart volume was volume overloaded decreased systemic perfusion so that clinically also it fits to hemodynamic and pda and echo wise also it fits into hspda so what will be our uh, decision in this both are combining clinically hspda echo wise hspda so my uh, my uh, say is treat this pda because it is it is matching purane uh, if somebody can if somebody can mute kirpa bhi nahi okay doctor so ardik jalal so therefore your clinically hspda echo hspda is very easy to take decision close this pda okay this is again defining you the issues which the pda creates just after birth within one day as been i explained you in physiology you will have the issues of pulmonary hemorrhage then after around 3 days you will have issues of ivh then by second week you will have issues of a nc and then after 3 weeks you will start having issues of cld and then death so this is how the pda affects you so you have to curtail your ductal problem within this time this is a time you should be acting okay now this examples we have seen that there was a baby okay which was clinically and echo wise was fitting into the criteria of hspda so our decision was very easy okay close this duct now let's see this scenario 30 weeker female 1.3 kg on room air starting having mild tachypnea mean blood pressures are 39 so this is not good to just give you mean blood pressures there has to be systolic and diastolic cft is fine less than 3 second pulses are good tolerating feeds but because of you know some tachypnea and this thing so function echo was done so there was a pda structural normal heart ductal size is 2.1 mm left to right shunting peak velocity is around 2 meters per second la lv size is normal it's not volume overloaded la ratio is 1.6 just borderline there was an absent diastolic flow in celiac and sma okay but aca dopplers are normal so now what will be my approach whether i want to close this pd or not see no why no because one your echo parameter is not very clearly showing that it is very uh, you know it is severe pda but more importantly is this baby was clinically fine in room air tolerating feeds if this baby is clinically fine even if the pda is there why you want to uh, touch that pda let that pda and leave it on the nature because that pda is not troubling that baby at that time okay but okay i will not intervene till if this baby uh, deteriorates clinically but again i we will discuss that one this baby was bit bigger okay 30 weeker 1.3 kg that's why i was bit assured that this pda will close but i will not stop observing that pda even though my baby is clinically well i will review this baby again within 24 to 48 hours with an echo and if my echo parameters are worsening going towards um pulmonary over circulation system hyperperfusion even though my baby is clinically well then i will start thinking about intervening and start thinking about closing this duct but if my baby clinically is well my echo parameters are same i will stop this. i will again keep on reviewing i will not treat this pda okay so what are the treatment approaches for pda one is that conservative approach it means you adjust your ventilation so that your left to right shunting is being controlled restrict your fluid do not give over zealous fluid just maintain it just at the normal or just below the normal and wait and watch one is prophylactic approach which was there now we have stopped it means that we need we used to treat all the babies within 12 hours without doing an echo without assess without pda becoming clinically significant other approach is symptomatic approach it is like we wait till the symptoms appear okay if the symptoms appear get an echo done then treat now we are talking much more about this approach early targeted approach okay 
diagnose the PDA before it becomes clinically. <laughs> you catch that PDA which is going to become clinically significant and treat the baby because by the time the <laughs> by the time the <laughs> baby becomes <clears throat> somebody has to be muted. By the time this PDA becomes clinically significant, it becomes bad. So you have to catch that PDA. So we need to catch those PDA and treat. So that is what we call as early targeted approach. That is what is now we have talked about. So this is the uh, graph which tells you, you know, from birth till through days. This is in the first three days. We used to give prophylactic treatment here. Early symptomatic treatment is when this baby becomes symptomatic. Most of the babies, they become symptomatic by third day of life, as we have already discussed. So by the time, if your babies become symptomatic, it means your PDA has become bad. Here will be some early symptoms, which we may miss. So the best way is to catch the PDA by echo in this time and treat the PDA if it is this PDA is going to be HSPDA. Conservative approach, we have to, uh, uh, we have to just con uh, apply that approach throughout the treatment. Because as you see, as you see there, first three days, we, we can easily catch these PDAs, early symptomatic PDA by echo. Then echo, yes, but now a nurse is also being coming, but clinically it becomes evident after three days. And surgical closure, you can do anytime, but now the uh, incidence has become very less for surgical closure as our knowledge is going up and up and like as we are trying to try to know this PDA much better what we used to. See, there are some myths what we used to believe. Okay. And now our evidence in first 72 hours has shown us about the PDA physiology. Our traditional view was the ductus arteriosus of a very preterm baby has a minimal constrictive in early after birth. But it is not true. I have discussed, I have shown you the diagram. But what we have seen is there is wide, wide range of constriction. In some of the babies, you know, even I, when I, we do and go and do an echo, baby is 26, 27 weaker, 700 grams, and there is no PDA. So I have seen many babies like this. There is no PDA, even on day second of life. Okay. So our uh, uh, studies and clearly experience has shown that this thing is not true, that 100% will be open. There is a wide range of constriction. Then we used to think that early shunts are balanced, you know, in the first three days because of the uh, high right-sided pressures, the shunts left to right is balanced, but it is not true. Even I have seen, we have seen babies that they predominant of left to right shunting appears within eight to 10 hours of life. So it is so variable. Early ductus shunting is not hemodynamic significant, but no, because the shunting can be significant within few hours of life. So that's why your left to right shunting and volume overload and your uh, hemodynamic significance becomes depicts earlier also. Okay, <clears throat> this is what we have shown. Hemodynamic significance precedes development of clinical signs. Okay, this is what I was saying. Average in first two days, your hemodynamic significance can be picked up and seen in echo. Okay, but by the time it becomes clinically evident, it is late. So that's why what we say is in first 72 hours, PDA hemodynamic significant has to be caught by echo. And then once it's become clinically significant, then you may have missed the boat. So that's why I try to catch the PDA during that time and then take the action. So see this baby, 31 days old baby, okay, 27 weaker, referred from level three for emergency PDA ligation, okay. At that time, this baby was on high flow, uh, high uh, high frequency ventilation, was on dibutamine because of hypotension. There was 3.2 millimeter PDA. Okay, this is the cardiac output, 420 ml per kg per. So there is one classification which was been published by a group in 2009 in archive of disease of childhood. They are the highest class, severest form is class C4 E4. So this was fitting into that. In this, this baby's uh, PDA ligation was done. Everything was well done, but there was persistent, profound cardiac, uh, low cardiac output, multi-organ failure, and baby died two days after the post-op. So now you will be thinking this baby died because of surgical intervention, but it was not true. See, what was the thing? The small hearts are when the echo. So there were multiple echoes were done. There was, this baby was having RDS given surfactant extubated on CPAP, but 
all these features of hs uh, hemodynamic significant pda was there on echo also it was there but what they did they did a observant approach where we will just observe because pda closes by itself doesn't do anything but by one month when this pda did not get close and because becoming hemodynamic significant it causes all issues and then at one month it was been uh, referred for ligation but this baby died so this baby did not die because of ligation and operative it died because the intervention was not done at the proper time so what was the le lesson here so this is one of the hazards of our expectant approach you know don't treat so this is one of the hazard so there was a disconnect between the clinical scenarios and finding of 2d like these findings were there but we we thought okay this will be closed by itself so intervention at proper time would have saved the child, life of this child so prophylactic treatment which was there before 12 hours okay and what it did what it showed like it was a barbara smith's publication in 2000 what it showed that cognitive delay and deafness blindness it at two years outcomes they were same the only thing it reduced was the ligation which used to be very high in previous years but now the ligation rate has gone down okay and ivh nothing else changed but there were high issues uh, side effects of these drugs that's why uh, this uh, prophylactic approach was given out so this is this is the paper which uh, tells you the same okay the pulmonary pulmonary uh, hemorrhage was been decreased but now we go for early treatment early treatment if your pda is hs pda okay so when we decide about the drugs what the evidence shows the evidence shows because of the endomethacin there is a high uh, evidence that shows because of high uh, side effects there were less side effects with iv ibuprofen less renal effects with ibuprofen okay and then there were issues of uh, this pphn and bilirubin high bilirubin because of that binding but <clears throat> it was with them so the salt was changed and this issue was been resolved so even on cochrane it tells that ibuprofen the changed salt is the one which is the uh, uh, treatment of choice we did a study in our unit we did um rcts on iv indomethacin iv paracetamol what we found the rate of closure of iv paracetamol was same as iv indomethacin but there were less pulmonary hemorrhage and less chronic uh, chronic lung disease in paracetamol group so that since then we have started using our uh, in our unit uh, the paracetamol iv paracetamol so we use 15 mg per kg per dose every 6 hourly from for 5 to 7 days many studies now have shown that i oral has got a similar rate of closure as iv so people have started using iv paracetamol and uh, Uh, sorry oral paracetamol and oral uh, ibuprofen but oral absorption if your baby is sick or having nec that's where your issue starts so that question is still unanswered because there is no proper rcts in that so this is what i was talking see this slide i have already shown so your conservative treatment should continue for whole time but you should pick this pda here in early asymp symptomatic air early asymptomatic uh, region in less than 2 days and try to treat the pda before it becomes symptomatic okay even though we don't have big trial these trials are going on by baby oscar trial results will be uh, be published by next year so these are uh, what is the significance of these studies uh, baby oscar trial triacp trial benedictal trial all the babies what they have enrolled are less than 28 weeks the population we are talking about okay all the babies all the uh, studies which have shown that no treatment okay of the duct outcomes are same but there is a major difference between these studies and that study is all those studies have enrolled babies which are more than 28 weeks and above okay none of the babies have exclusively elbws so these are the baby, these are the uh, studies which have taken exclusively elbws so that's where our question hampers us and we ask questions and this studies they will give us the answer till then this is what we do in our unit i know we have we are fortunate enough to have people who are trained in uh, hemodynamics and uh, echo but if you have your cardiologist uh, attached to that you can ask those things to him 
but it, sometimes it's difficult but this is what we do if we have a baby we less than 28 weeker in our unit early functional echography around 12 hours of life then if you in an echo or clinically if it is hspda defines to that we treat this baby if it is not hspda we wait for the treatment repeat the echo around 24 to 48 hours or earlier if baby becomes clinically significant like it shows the signs and symptoms of hspda if it is hspda we start with the medical treatment and that is what we use is iv paracetamol 50 mg per kg per dose every 6 hourly and then we repeat an echo every 24 to 48 hours even though our uh, treatment duration is 5 to 7 days but if pda closes before the like i have done the echo on third day after starting the treatment and pda is closed we will stop the treatment okay we will not continue till 5 days and then if it is hspda persist and we have completed two courses of medical treatment and there is no improvement clinically and even on functional like echo uh, that it is still showing that it is hspda then only we go for surgical intervention like in last 11 years we have ligated four babies till now and one baby is the, like the term pda is a very small it's not a very big problem like you no know, we have treated around four term babies for the pda with oral ibuprofen in last 11 years and one baby 4.2 kg baby with the duct of around 4.5 mm we don't know the cause, reason for that we had to ligate because the baby was going into failure that was the, in last 11 years that is the only one term baby we have gone for the ligation But otherwise for all elbws we follow this uh, regimen what i have just shown you so my friends uh, it has to be very targeted all hemodynamics treatments are targeted even if you have lost your uh, target you are not approach your pro should not you have to hit your target till you achieve that target thank you very much uh you can ask your questions or type like the way uh, if whatever dr sunil the way it is they can ask the questions or they can type in the chat box so somebody has asked the question that is crocin or paracetamol useful as compared to brufen like uh, i've talked there are studies which have shown oral crocin oral like uh, two of the studies are from india only from dr kabra unit so what they have shown is the closure rate is similar as compared to the other drugs also so they have been using it in our unit we don't use oral paracetamol or ibuprofen in elbws because one thing is none of the studies have shown the bioavailability of oral paracetamol or oral ibuprofen so nobody has done the pharmacotoc pharmacokinetics of these drugs orally so that is the only reason and the other thing is if you are having neck okay if your guts are perfused less perfused then the bioavailability will be less so that's why one more question sir for you it's uh, two days of treatment if it doesn't work what should we do ligation or what in what next no two two it means two courses i think so somebody must try to but two no, because priyanka oh, yeah. so giving paracetamol then one course is for 5 to 7 days so we similarly we do two courses okay so even if that is not worked your pda size is same your uh, all the parameters of hs pda is same and clinically your baby is still on ventilator and hypotensive yes then we go for ligation we have to go for surgical uh, intervention one more sir like guideline for enteral feeding while the baby is having babies uh, while treating pda treating yeah so uh, most many units previously uh, used to make the babies nvm nil by mouth but this is not been done now in our unit we continue with the feeds but like normally what we do is we increase the feed if it is ebm by 30 ml per kg per day for the elbws but if the baby is on pda treatment we increase it by 10 to 15 ml the high the, our rate of increase will be half as compared to the normal so we go don't go very fast on the uh, uh, feeding but we don't make the babies nil by mouth 
we continue with the feeds most of the unit does that now now sir, one more like uh, sir please uh, pda treatment summarize the pda treatment in elbw expectant versus active management sir, this is elbw what, uh, elbw yeah so elbw expectant I, versus active yeah so this is what i showed them i again uh, you know uh, will share that slide uh, this my second last slide which i just uh, shown at that time Uh, let me show you that this is what uh, is normally most of the units not till now they are doing there will be changes after few years but this is what most of the units are doing it nowadays also this is the one for elbws so your uh, like we have to pick up early that's why we do a function like oh, within 12 hours okay 12 hours clinically Baby is fine, uh, showing the features, or if you have functional echo, is showing it is HSPDA. Start the treatment. If it is not HSPDA, very small constrictive, just wait for the treatment. But you need to monitor this drug. So this is why we call it monitoring of PDA. Repeat the echo, which is what we do in 24 to 36 hours for this. And wherever it becomes HS from non-HS to HS, even though clinically baby is fine, we start medical treatment. and when we start medical treatment we again keep on repeating the echo in next 24 to 48 hours even on treatment if it is closed earlier we tend to stop the treatment before like suppose we give iv paracetamol for 5 days but i have done an echo on third or fourth day and pda is closed we will stop the treatment we will not wait for 5 days to complete so this is what is being doing so you mix that so it is expectant you are expecting but you are monitoring that drug so if you are monitoring the duct if you have started the treatment you can stop the treatment early and if you have not started but on your echo if you have picked up that this pda was like 1.1 1.1 mm but now today it is 2 mm your la lv has started dilating your la ratio has gone up it means your pda is becoming hemodynamic significant even though your babies are on the same kind of pressures but now i know this pda will become clinically evident on ventilator so we will start treatment for this baby what to do with if one course of paracetamol fails what to do next so what we do is like we consider one course for 5 days so what we do we extend it to because people have used till 10 days also in some of the studies we extend it to 7 days and then we reassess even then it is not closed we extend it till 10 days but the maximum we give for 10 days iv paracetamol but for uh, indomethacin maximum we give it uh, iv indomethacin if you are giving which is not not available it is till for 5 days like if you are given oral brufen you can repeat two courses like if you are doing 12 hours or 24 hours 10 5 5 or 10 10 5 or 10 10 10 these are the three regimens which people use you do do two courses like 3 days 3 days maximum 5 to 6 days if it is not closed like uh, we recently we have two twins 700 grams two twins are there so this is their example so in one of the twin in both the twins the pda was hs pda so what we did we extended the treatment in one of the twin the pda has now become very small 0.5 mm in other the twin we gave two courses but clinically the baby is better now was off ventilator on cpap now but pda which was 2 mm now it is 1.5 mm 1.4 mm but we have completed 10 days of course so what we are continuing is we are continuing with the conservative treatment we are we have stopped all paracetamol and everything baby is clinically well is on lesser uh, ventilatory requirements tolerating feeding well okay size has decreased but not closed so we are not doing anything what we are doing is every 48 hours we are doing the uh, echo and if on my echo if this baby pda will increase in size okay or the baby goes on ventilator and pda increases in size la lv started getting dilated we will take this baby for ligation then this is how we are approaching these pda babies one more thing like any trial of prophylactic paracetamol versus selective eco assisted approach 
yeah this is what we are doing in our unit we have started in in some of the in one group we have started using prophylactic paracetamol like like in babra smith's studies they started doing uh, giving indomethacin in, instead we are giving paracetamol so we are doing this in our unit we still don't know the results but we are doing this uh, what the question has been asked because not no, none of the trial none of the trials are there regarding this question but we are doing this and let's see what we will get but the only positive thing what we have got is we were not giving you know this if you are not doing early echo and we were not giving this prophylactic treatment in that we are getting the we are uh, getting the babies on day third and uh, second or third with pulmonary hemorrhage but in this paracetamol group it's not there so still our we don't have the answer but this is just our observation since we have started doing this study it's like one more like common question everybody do ask is like uh, bb is having severe ph and there is pd also okay. usually they'll be like they will be together most of the time like if baby is very hypoxic bad then it yeah. then that case it will be like the scenario will be severe ph with pd yeah so if you have a severe pulmonary hypertension then you have to look for one thing what is the doppler flow through the pda okay if there is a really there is a pulmonary hypertension then the doppler flow in the pda will be bi directional or predominantly right to left so what we do then we see that in one cycle how much is right to left and how much is left to right flow in that uh, ductal doppler if your right to left flow is less than 30% of the total cycle then that means it your predominant issue is pda you so you can close the duct but if your right to left flow is more than 30% of the cycle okay then you should not be closing that duct because if your pulmonary pressure rises okay and if you close the duct your rv will fail and that baby will die so is a dictum that if your right to left flow in duct is more than 30 uh, closing that treating that pda keep that pda open the other questions usually do ask people ask is like when there is a birth asphyxia cardiac dysfunction and pda yeah so if your cardiac functions are low is not good then you also you should not be treating the pda because with birth asphyxia and hypoxia you are expecting more of pphn and you are already your rv is underperforming okay suppose your if start working well but your right side uh, pressures after load is high the only way the rv will vent out the flow will be the pda so in that case should not touch the pda keep the pda like that so your rv uh, your functioning should be good okay there should not be any hypoxia your ventilation should be proper your hemodynamic like the fluids you have given is proper inotropes are good your um, um, fluid everything should be good only then if the issues are there then try to treat, treat the pda never touch the pda if your if your baby is going into real shock like real shock in the sense don't take the mean blood pressures in your pda when you define shock you know what people does they try to do it with the mean blood pressure but actually then you have to look for your uh, systolic blood pressure look for your urine output look for your cft only then you define and combine everything just don't go on the number of mean blood pressures because your diastolic pressure will be less because of the ductal steel your mean blood pressures will be less so don't take into consideration just the blood pressure numbers so that is very important while you treat this pda some some tips uh, where the eco is not available some tips to like managing the pda difficult uh, i know but still I clinically know. see uh, in the worst scenario where you don't have any chances of getting an echo done but clinically you are very sure that this is the pda and now you have decided to treat this pda okay you treat the pda then do one thing start give oral brufen or whatever you want to give or iv paracetamol okay start uh, from then for the next 48 to 72 hours start measuring pre ductal and post ductal saturation number 1 every 4 to 6 hours start palpating upper limb uh, pulses like brachial and femoral two number 3 start doing nibp non visible blood pressures for all the four limbs 
okay you should have one baseline for this suppose there was no difference in your fore limb blood pressures there was no difference in upper limb and lower limb pulses okay it they were fine and since you have started within 12 hours or 24 hours you start seeing difference between upper limb and lower limb blood pressures or you start seeing that upper limb uh, pulses are good but lower limb pulses are becoming feeble that clearly shows it may be a duct dependent lesion stop it immediately and refer the baby immediately to the higher center this is what maximum you can do without an echo so these are the three three or four tips if you are treating the pda baby without getting an echo done I think we should wrap up now. And uh, thank you, Mohit sir. As usual, very lively, interesting, and some humorous in between videos as you expected in the beginning itself. And the targeted approach is still continuing for a long time now. <laughs> uh, I like uh, okay. And uh, uh, there was a very active participation and uh, a good uh, uh, people must have benefited from your uh, talk, practical aspects and when to treat, when not to treat, lot of variation, lot of spectrum and uh, even with eco, without eco, we did discuss about the parts. So uh, hope and if any doubts are there, moisture is always available. Anyway, it was uh, very nice, uh, lucid, informative presentation. And uh, like already people have started appreciating nice and very informative. So good. Thank you, Mohit sir. Again, like in the future, sometime if we get the chance, we'll get you here in our platform of Fernandez Maharashtra. And uh, nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for active participation. And again, next week, we will have one more uh, uh, sort of uh, stalwart in the field of neurology. Hopefully, like our plan is next time is to discuss about uh, NRP. Uh, what happened, like what changes has happened in 2020 NRP. So that is uh, our next topic. So please uh, look out for the next week's in the uh, like uh, flyer. Shortly we'll share with you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, happy new year. Uh, enjoy. Uh, like uh, happy new year, sir, you and everyone. Be safe and enjoy the new year. Uh, bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.